Hello everybody and welcome to the barbecue shop here at Hayes Garden World. Uh, today we're joined by Mr. Richard Holden. Hello. Hello sir. And in this video we're going to do a pork shoulder or pulled pork as it's more commonly known. Pork shoulder. Pork shoulder, um, cheap cut of meat from the butchers. It's one of the typical, uh, it's one of the, one of the classic American joints of meat to, to cook on the barbecue, low and slow, so you've got your pulled pork, your brisket and your ribs. Um, it's from the shoulder, it's a working muscle, lots of connective tissue, it needs to be cooked low and slow for a long period of time. And the benefit of this is that we can get some nice spicy flavor into it and we yep. can also get some good smoke into it. Um, simple preparation on this, just get the butcher to take the rind off for, it, for you. Uh, take some of the fat off, but don't take it all off because you do want some of that fat to render through and give you flavor. Uh, this one has got the bone left in. It's just got the, uh, the, the shoulder blade, the collarbone. You can do it without the shoulder blade in. You can do it without. If you get a completely boneless and skinless piece of uh, pork from the butchers, that will work just as well. Um, and it's really a simple case. We're using the Angus and Oink General Rub Seasoning for this one. Um, just a simple case of nice sprinkle all the way over all the edges of the pork. And uh, bring the pork out of the fridge a good half an hour, 45 minutes before you're going to put it on the smoker to let it come up to room temperature. And then last surface. And then what we'll do is we'll just pat that all over, make sure that it's nicely pressed on. Try to grab any extra rub that's just in the bottom of the tray. You might want, you know, you might see some people that would put a, a little bit of American mustard on that, again, yeah. just to help it stick. Um, if you've got it, great. If not, don't worry about it. It just adds an extra little bit of sweetness. Most dry rubs have sugar in them as a key ingredient anyway with the, with the salt and then the rest of the spices. Um, the American French, the French's American mustard just gives you that little bit of extra sweetness. But that now is ready for our smoker. Richard, we're gonna take it across to the smoker now. We've got a 47 centimeter Weber Smoky Mountain here. We've already set it up for the, the minion method at the bottom yep. of the barbecue. Um, so we're going to put the Boston butt on and what we are going to do as well, we're going to add some um, Weber hickory wood chips. I've got some there ready for you. These are the chunks though, aren't These you? are the chunks, sorry, I do apologise. Okay. So chips when you're off. using uh, thinner cuts of meat. If I take the lid off, do you want to put the wood chunks on and I'll yep. sort the pork out and put the probes in there? Not a problem at all. So this, you've got two cooking grates in the, in the smoky mountain cooker. Um, as you can see here, he's just taking the front door off. I'll let you explain what yep. you're doing. So what I'm doing is I'm putting the wood chunks onto the charcoal. So how many of those? I'm putting five in this time, but they're not very big chunks. If it was um, smaller chunks, I would, uh, bigger chunks, I'd put less in. So and they just go straight onto the, straight onto the hot coals. The, center, the hot coal section in the center, don't they? And they'll start smoking <laughs> within about 15 seconds. Pop the door back on. And then the pork is just going to go straight onto the top deck of our smoker. And we have a new product this year. This is the Weber iGrill uh, 2, which has two probes. And one of those probes is going to go into, our, into the meat. And it's the tip of the probe that needs to go into the core of the, the meat to give us that yep. central temperature. And then the other one, for this particular cook, we can just pass that straight through the grommet on the side of the barbecue, on the side of the smoker. That will give us a readout on our display here, which also connects to our iPhones or our iPads. And what we can then do is, using the two probes and the Bluetooth technology, we can see on our phone yep. the internal temperature of the pork and the internal temperature of the cooker as well. So if the cooker starts to uh, fluctuate in temperature, we can actually get a, get a notification and come out and sort that one out. So nice little bit of kit to have. So we're gonna leave that for about four hours now? Yeah, we'll leave it for about four hours. We'll get it nicely smoked. We'll leave it unwrapped. Um, we'll get it to around about 70, 75 degrees, and then we'll come out and we'll wrap that, and we'll talk about that when we, in yep. the next little part. Okay, so we'll give this a nice four hours to cook, and we'll see you back then. Let's see how the pulled pork's getting on. So, take the probe out. We're at a kind of high 60s, low 70s, which is a perfect temperature to be taking this and um, wrapping it. So we've got a foil drip tray. That goes in. If I can get you to take some of that um, cider and just pour a little bit around the base of the tray, probably about half a centimetre or so. This will act as a nice um, humidifier. It will steam inside, because what we're going to do is we're going to cover this over with some tin foil. That will be about perfect there. You can use apple juice, um, anything like that. It just goes really well with the pork. Again, some, um, some recipes just say to foil at this stage. Um, one of my first incidences, <clears throat> and it was an incident, 
with pulled pork was um, a, couple, a good few years ago when we were doing, um, I was doing six pulled pork shoulders and I just wrapped them all the way around with the, with the tin foil. And in the morning when I came to take them off because I did an overnight cook, when I came to take it off, all the juice just fell straight through the bottom of the foil and it went all the way down the front of my legs and into my shoes. I've done so my top well. tip is use one of these nice sturdy foil trays, yep. put the pork in there, it'll keep everything together. And when that pork gets to 95 and it's, start, and it's ready for pulling, it will just, if you, it's just like an accordion that is just ever so slightly not compressed and it just drops in the middle. So the foil will keep everything together. So for the, to bring up the temperature, we're not actually looking for a certain length of time now cooking, we're looking for an internal temperature. We're looking for an internal temperature. The connective tissue that holds the muscle fibers together will dissolve, melt at 94 degrees C. Okay. So we take that to 95, that's what allows the pork to pull. So we take that, as long as it takes now, within the same temperature range, we take it to 95 degrees C, take it off and let it rest for a couple of hours. So we'll come back at that point, I think. Okay. Right, we've given it near enough the whole day. So can we check on the uh, shoulder pork? We can, we know we're ready or it's about ready because we're at 95 degrees on the eye grill too. So normally at this point, <clears throat> we would take the pork off and we'd let it rest for a good couple of hours. Yep. Um, put some nice uh, clean tea towels across it and just let that cool down. What am I doing with that? Fastening around. So let's bring this off. Like I say, you would normally let this rest. It's been cooking, as you said, nearly all day, about nine hours. Um, can I do the reveal? You can do the reveal. So it's been cooking for nine hours or so. It's, you know, deserves a bit of a rest, but <clears throat> wow. it's late and... Um, There's the real reason we actually put it in a foil tray, because yeah. I don't know if you noticed, we put a like a, on that one. We put half a centimetre of cider in the bottom of that, and that is nearly full. So pork shoulder, connective tissue, a lot of good flavour, you know, certain. A lot of chefs would say fatty flavour and we'd agree with that. So if we look at this, you can just see this is pulled pork. So the connective tissue has broken down and we're starting to get muscle strands there, just coming away nice and cleanly. Pull that away. This is the point. <clears throat> good, job, good job we did it on the board. That has a little yeah. lip in it. This is the point where once you pulled it, pull it all the way through and then warm your barbecue sauce. Yeah. Put warm barbecue sauce on. If you just put cold on, it's just going to cool. sap the heat out of it. Sounds really obvious, but you know some people don't think about that. So warm your barbecue sauce and then um, just mix that all together. I think it's time to have a taste. Mix that all together. There's a lot of smoke on the outside. There's a lot of crust. There's a lot of seasoning. And obviously that's only on the outside. There's a lot of meat inside the pork shoulder that hasn't been as well seasoned and as well smoked. So once you've pulled it, mix it all around in a tray. Yeah. Mix some of the juices back in as well. If you want, if I was at home, I would have a separate tray. I'd pull it in a separate tray, add a few of those juices back in, and then put your barbecue sauce in. You don't want it swimming in sauce. You just want a nice, nice texture, nice coating, so that when you put it in a in a nice bun or something like that with some coleslaw and some leaf, it doesn't. It's not dripping everywhere. So recipe on the website. Yep. So if you want more information regarding this recipe, visit our website, hayesgardenworld.co.uk. We're across all the social media platforms. I just found an end piece with loads of seasoning. And if you've enjoyed this video, please watch some of our other videos. Uh, give our YouTube channel a like, and we'll uh, see you again next time.